Uh, can I help you with something? Mm -hmm. Is it time to go for your walk? Do you do you want a snack? Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh you do, huh? Okay. Hey. Hi, everybody. So I just wanted to give an update here and let, let everybody know where we're at, what we're doing. So since we left New York, we've been just over five weeks back out on the road. And I hope the wind isn't uh, affecting the audio here. So we've been just over five weeks back on the road. We're out here in the Quartzsite, Arizona area. Um, the, the overall is that I'm just kind of getting settled. Um, you know that I had a, a really turbulent trip out here. And when we got here, it took me a good amount of time just to, just to unwind from that and get myself back grounded again. So my goal uh, has always been to be comfortable in the truck and to be able to have days where all my needs are met, uh, things that I like to do can be done, that I have the things with me to do those tasks or hobbies. And so all of the changes and additions and tweaks and removals to the truck have all been, you know, working towards that goal of, of being comfortable and being able to live a comfortable life out here for both me and for this knucklehead right here. So are we at that point? Well, we're, we're definitely working in the right direction. I want to just give an update on some of the, the main systems here and how they're working and anything I think I might change about them. Um, so let's start with, uh, we'll start with the water system. So yesterday I, I set up my shower tent finally. I don't know why I'd just been putting that off. I'd been showering in town since we came to this area at the laundromat. Um, but I, I said, finally, I don't feel like going to town. I don't need anything. So I uh, wanted to get a shower. So I set up the shower tent and took the most glorious shower ever out here because I don't have to worry about running out of water. You remember I was using the small, it was like a four gallon water tank. And now I have the 16 gallon water tank that feeds the the shower and so i could relax and i could let the water run maybe a little more than i was before and it was nice and warm and I, it was great it t i took the best shower i put a blue tarp down you can kind of see it sticking out down there underneath the tent i put a blue tarp down so that i can you know i don't even have to wear my shower shoes in there i can go barefoot and just had a great shower so the last time we had this set up um, up in Colorado was the first time that it blew over from the wind. It actually ripped one of the fabric loops. You know, these have these little fabric loops on each corner that you stake down. Well, one of these ripped right out and the tent went down in some wind. So when I was back in New York, my my mom god bless her she was able to sew the loop back on i don't know which one it was actually i'm just kind of pointing to that one she was able to sew the loop back on i bought these heavy duty tent stakes these are about i don't know eight inches long really good diameter they're like giant nails and bought a set of them so the four corners of the shower are nailed down and i added these outrigger strings on all four corners and so this thing I think is you know you know it's about as sturdy as you're gonna get unless you get one of these that has the metal framework that goes around it and I'm not at that point yet I think this is gonna work for me for the time being quick update so last night we had a pretty aggressive windy night I was laying in bed watching TV and the truck was rocking a little bit uh, you know i've we've had worse wind but it was a pretty aggressive windy night and so of course i'm thinking about the shower tent that we had set up 
and came out this morning. First thing I did was walk around the back of the truck and the shower tent is standing just as it was. So I do believe that unless we get some really, really storm driven wind that this is going to hold up pretty good with these um with these strings tied down so today is also pretty windy um just by luck the wind is coming from the north so it's coming across the truck so this is blocked uh, a little bit just by the truck because the wind is coming uh in this direction here so i think this is going to hold up pretty good so not only did i take a shower in the shower tent but now it also becomes my toilet so you know i use the bucket method so now the bucket stays set up in here it's not the most glorious thing but um it's in here all the supplies are in there so in the morning and I came out this morning and it was probably 40-ish, 45 degrees out. But this thing really warms up from the sun. So it was nice and cozy inside uh, and was able to use it and get back out of it without getting uncomfortable. So that's a great system. I would highly recommend putting up one of these tents if you're doing the bucket method. Even if you're not showering, to use it as your toilet is really great instead of uh, having it inside the truck. So the water system, the hot water heater, really awesome. Now inside with the faucet. So I use the faucet every day. Uh, it's how I like fill Lefty's water bowl. I get water to drink. I get water from my coffee. So the one thing that I'm sure a lot of you noticed is there's nothing to catch the water underneath. So, and, and that was kind of by design um, my plan is to add a shelf here and then use this or an equivalent and that becomes my, my sink underneath it. Now, if I'm going to like wash dishes, I do that outside. I fill some water into this with soap and I wash the dishes outside. I'm, I'm not going to discontinue doing that even if I have a sink in here just because it's easy. And why not do it outside? You know, you don't have to worry about where you're splashing water. Um, so the inside, this is working great. I do want to get a piece of wood and some shelf brackets and add my shelf here. So that's on my project list. Um, I was just getting ready to have some oatmeal for breakfast. Something I, I started doing. So I got apple cinnamon oatmeal and I add a, a cup of uh cinnamon applesauce to it you know along with the water and that really i don't know it just makes it a lot taste a lot better for me so inside here the new refrigerator that i added turning this into a freezer that has made such a huge difference to my life i can fit so much more food i have frozen food in here that I never could carry before. I carry ice cream treats now. I'm I'm on the, you know, the cream sickles and the Oreo cookie pop things. I've got all kinds of stuff, Snicker bar, ice cream treats. And something that I also stumbled on as a benefit here. So let me pull this out and show you. So you know I talked about this having the separator wall which causes this side here to not be as cold. So I fill it with like these fruit drinks and uh, protein drinks here. So they chill, they don't freeze, but they get really super cold. So instead of having to put these over in my refrigerator, I have them in here and they get nice and they're awesome. You take them out of there and they're, they're probably 38 degrees. Uh, I run this freezer at 11 degrees uh, and I run the refrigerator at 38 degrees. So huge huge benefit trying to live out of just that one i i could never i don't know no wonder i was struggling to have food my menu has you know increased tenfold over what i was able to cook before and i can go in and get food and i'm out here for uh you know seven days straight eating meats and you know i 
I can freeze the meat over here and then thaw it out when I want to cook it. I have so much more room too, just uh, square footage of storage space it is a huge improvement. So I'm so happy that I did that. The air fryer, uh, which is put away over here where it gets stored. I don't, you probably can't see it, but coffee maker, air fryer back there. So the air fryer I use all the time. I wish I had two of them so that I could uh, cook a steak in one and cook french fries in the other. You know, I'd be using twice the power, but, so what I find, um, what I find, and it's a good segue into talking about power. So this time of year, we're in the winter, it's December, we're only getting, uh, what, 10 hours of sunlight a day? And it's at a very steep angle. So, gosh, I wish I could tilt my solar panels, or if I had some on the side of the truck, that's in my on my project list for possible future project so not getting anywhere near the solar power that we do when the sun is right up above the truck so what i find is here's an example if i use the air fryer let's say it's and i i'll use it during the peak of the sun so one two o'clock in the afternoon if i use the air fryer it'll take the batteries from a hundred percent down to about 98 percent what yeah and that's uh, that's on like a, a 30 minute run what i what i've done is i'll cook french fries and then i'll put a steak in steak gets finished i put the fries back in for a five minute finish so i'm using it for about 30 minutes in total so it'll use about two percent of the battery so the solar uh you know if it was the summer the solar would keep the batteries at 100 percent but there's just not enough um, solar power because of the angle of the sun to be able to to run that without um, using the batteries so you know part of my comfort is being able to lay in bed and watch TV when I want and I'll watch TV on you know on the big TV till 7 30 8 o'clock and then I shut off everything and the batteries will be at about 95 percent we go to sleep, I switch over to watching videos on the tablet, and I just fall asleep at that point, basically. So I put the tablet on, continue whatever I was watching on the TV, and I fall asleep. Um, we get up in the morning, so if I wake up at 4 a.m., let's say, the batteries are at 85%. So overnight, they've used about 10% of the power to run the refrigerator, the freezer, and I'm running the heater also at night because it's getting down to the high 30s, low 40s every night. So we're running the heater, the Wii Boost obviously runs 24 seven and the two uh, refrigerator units, and it uses about 10% of battery. Um, and even if I wake up at six or seven, it's still at about 10%. You know, it's in 10 hours, uh, what I've clocked it at for 10 hours, it'll use 10% of the batteries in the dark to run to run those things. So I get up in the morning, I turn the TV on, the inverter, turn the TV on. Uh, I'm able to uh, make my coffee in the morning. I don't have to run the generator. Now last year at this time, I had just added my solar system. So I was, that was my first time now this my second my second year in the winter I'm getting a little more in tune with what I can do with the system and what it can do for me um, so what else can we talk about the new the new stove and oven so I have been using this uh, initially I was not happy with the stove because even on the lowest setting the flame was too high so, for example, I cook these little frying pan pizzas that my friend Ghislaine uh, taught me how to make. So I make a pizza in the frying pan, and you got to have the heat way down low so that they cook slow and it doesn't burn the crust. The, this uh, stove, even on the lowest setting, was too high of a flame, and I was overheating things that I wanted to cook slowly. 
the other day, I stumbled upon the fix for that. So as you turn the stove off, the flame goes way down to off, obviously. So if you, if you use that as the adjustment to get a low flame, you can go way down low to where it's barely, you know, just barely burning. Now I can go really low. Now look at the difference in the flame between the low setting and my low setting. I can go even lower than that if you just turn it real slow. Right before it shuts off, see? Now look at the difference in those two flames. So originally, and this I just stumbled on that just a few days ago. So I was really um, not happy that the flame was too high, and I was trying to figure out a way to regulate the gas lower. Um, so I was looking at getting regulators and all this stuff, and then lo and behold, I used my common sense and my noggin and figured out that if I just turn the knob the other way towards off, it goes way down low. So now I can cook my my pizzas. I cook sausage on low setting so they cook through without overheating. So uh, I've used the oven. I've been like heating up rolls and things in there and bread mainly. Um, I haven't like cooked something in there yet. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what to cook. I wasn't a big stove user back at my house, so it's not a big surprise that I'm not a big, or I should say oven user, uh, out here on the road. Um, so earlier, let's back up a little bit. I was talking about being comfortable in the truck. So when I was back in uh, New York and I lived in my house and all that, I was a, you know, kind of a, a home person. I, I did a lot of work out in my garage. I had my classic car. I had little motorcycles and mini bikes. And I was always tinkering on something and adding things and modifying things. And, and then in the house, I was, a you know, like a kind of a tech head as a hobby and always, you know, making servers that had a server running in my house and uh, home theater PC systems, computers hooked up to the TVs and all that stuff. And that was kind of my thing was, was doing that kind of stuff. And so why would that change when I'm out on the road? <clears throat> um, so that's what I was talking about earlier when I said I wanted to be able to do the things that I enjoy doing and be able to carry the stuff that lets me do those things. So you know, I've talked about my TV and the Android TV and the Roku and, you know, I have a hard drive up there that's got, you know, 750 movies and, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I enjoy that kind of stuff. That's my, my thing is, is tinkering around with that. And so having that stuff with me out here on the road has been a, you know, good comfort to me. So being able to kind of mimic my lifestyle before I went on the road, now that I am on the road, I'm getting really close to being able to do all those things. Um, being able to take a hot shower, being able to carry and have food with me that I want to eat all the time. I have so much food with me. Um, because it's comforting to know that I have all these options now of things that I can eat. So having all that available, having a good comfortable bed, having a place for Lefty that's comfortable. He sleeps right down here. He loves having the heater blowing on him. What I find is these chilly evenings that it gets down to 40 degrees, he'll wake up many times during the night and get up and shift around and, and that wakes me up. And when I run the heater, he doesn't do that. He sleeps like a rock because I'm sure he's nice and toasty. He doesn't have to try to warm himself up. He doesn't get up in the middle of the night and jump up on the bed with me. He's just laid out down there snoring away and that lets me sleep through the night. So the heater <laughs> allows us to be way more rested than uh, if we don't run it. So um, having heat, having hot water, having a good electrical system, all of these things 
are definitely benefiting us out here. So our days right now, um, I kind of do whatever I feel like doing. If I feel like sitting inside and watching movies all day, I do that. If I want to go out and putter around on the motorcycle, I do that. If I got something I feel like fixing or modifying, I do that. And I have the things with me to let me do all those things. You know, I brought plenty of tools. I have a good amount of supplies on hand to do like electrical wiring and things like that. Um, so right now I'm going to say on a comfort level, I'm very comfortable. And I think he is too. He likes to have consistency in his days. So we've been taking our walks. We go up and on the other side, the, the paved road is um, about 200 yards that way. We go onto the other side. There's a long, well, there's many of them, but the, we go down this one long dirt road and I unclip him and let him run free down there because we're not around anybody, right? Does that work all the time? It has worked so far, except for this morning. I had him unclipped, same area we're always at. And all of a sudden he decided to start taking off. And I could see a rig off in the distance and he beelined it right over there. So I had to start making tracks that direction. And he got over there to that rig and I'm yelling his name because I wanted people to know that there was a person attached to this dog and as I come around the side of this rig it was a it was a two axle tow behind trailer camper I come around the side of it and he's up on their their steps and somebody had tossed out like a piece of bacon that he was eating um, and the door was shut, but as I got up there and clipped him up, a woman came out and she said, oh, I'm glad that somebody was with the dog there. She goes, he kind of scared me. I said, I'm so sorry, because I'm always afraid that people are gonna be intimidated by him, even though, you know, he's a big baby, but some people think that he might be a, a vicious pit bull, but he's not, you know? I mean, you gotta hide your bacon, don't let him on your bed, because he'll go to sleep on it. And, uh, well, if you got a kitty cat, he'll want to play with that. Um, so I'd keep your cats locked up if he's around. <laughs> Been like going into town once a week just to stock up on food uh, and uh, keeping filled up with water. So I always keep this water jug out here. I use this, you know, when I want to wash my hands, uh, wash dishes off, things like that. That's super handy for that. Um, so I hope that's a, a good update for everybody. So if you want to stop by and see me out here, let me know if you're in the area. You can definitely come by and visit, pick up a sticker. That's a reminder if you all want to uh, get a sticker, look down in the video description for a PayPal link. Um, you shoot $10 off and we send you out a sticker. My daughter mails those out. It would really help us um, get back on budget, the whole solar panel fiasco really threw us upside down here so uh, we're trying to recoup from that so if you want to pick up a sticker we'd appreciate that and get a little campulence man love that you can stick on something so thanks everyone for watching I really appreciate it I hope everybody's doing good crazy world crazy holiday season coming up we made it through Thanksgiving Christmas is coming uh, and I hope everybody has a great holiday season. We'll see y'all real soon. Everybody take care. Be good. Thanks for watching.